All right, let's check the feed real fast. Bear with us. All right, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom. Just checking the feed real quick. Right, we good. We good to go. All right, hey, Shalom. Shalom. All right, we are the brothers from GMS Charlotte back at you with another live lesson through the Holy Spirit, the Rakakwadash. And before we get started, we want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakwadash. A double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught, who taught us his truth. Double salutations to all you Akim out there laboring in the house of David, the elect. That's pushing this word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom to you, brothers, and shalom, shalom. and shalom to the elect. All right back at you with another live lesson through the Holy Spirit, the Rakak Kadash. All right, news and prophecy. The writing is on the wall. Brace for impact. All right, the spirit has been going out. You know, so many different types of uh, current events that have been hitting the news over the past couple of weeks now, and it's really hard to keep up, man. But at the same time, as we brought out over the past few days here. You know, the major distraction was the Diddy crisis. <laughs> you know, that was the main thing that was covering, you know, majority of the headlines in the news, because anytime something like that happens, especially when they put Jake in the forefront, just know that something bigger is happening behind the scenes. All right. Which we have brought out. And, um, you know, right now. This whole st this whole situation that's going on in the Gaza Strip with the uh, so-called Israelis, the Amalekites. And pretty much, you know, they're getting ready to meet their fate because uh, uh, you have a, a group of, um, you know, so-called Arabic nations that are banding together to come against, you know, uh, 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 Amalek, so, you know, which is going to result into what? Uh, uh, America being drawn into World War Three as we see it. All right. Israel, Iran, America, Russia and the rest of the nations. All right. So the point is, is that the writing is on the wall. And I was actually looking it up that. um that quote or that statement, if you will, and uh, the meaning behind it, as you see here, it says the writing is on the wall. And that phrase means what? Disaster is imminent. <laughs> mm. You know, so you got a priest you want to chime in, you know? Yeah, man. This is just showing you that, look, the Lord is putting the finishing touches on Babylon, man. Man. Mm -mm -mm. You got it. I'll get that. Uh, you get the one in Amos, you get the one in Daniel, either uh. one. Yeah, we'll start with Daniel because this is this this is the same type of sentiment that we see taking place that happened in ancient Babylon, man. Right? Uh -huh. So this is Daniel chapter five, verse twenty-two. Yep. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, yeah, uh, Belshazzar, yeah, hast thou not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hath but hath lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee. And thou and thy lords, thy wives, and thy concubines have drunk wine in them, and thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold and, and of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know, and the power in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, has not been glorified. Like and that's not, a, not glorified. And it's the spirit too, because you know America has pretty much been given over to idol worship. Yep. You know, uh, idolatry. You know, false gods, and that's pretty much the um, the culture here in Babylon. You know, you can just worship as you please. You know, this is why we live in a time where um, that that anti Messiah energy spirit is being pushed heavy right now because we're at the end, man. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, flat out. You know, straight up uh, uh, Satan worship, you know, these different uh, pagan gods, you know. So this place, this place, Babylon. All right. The daughter of Babylon is going to is going to suffer the same fate. Destruction. All right. You got because it. The spirit that they were in during this time period or we're about to read about is what we see today, man. You know, like, as we know, this is flood behavior. But the spirit of mirth, you know, partying, you know, not giving a fuck, like you said, immersed in uh, an idol worship. They're, right. not, they're not giving the praise to the true power of the world, which is Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, because like you said, America has been given over the idols. Yep. So it's verse 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, and this writing was written, and this is the writing that was written, Mene, Mene, Tekel, you farsen. This mm -hmm. is the interpretation of the thing. Which that, which where it says Mene, Mene, which goes back to numbered, numbered, 
and I believe um to kill and you farson goes back to uh well to kill going into uh measured wade and you farson going into divided that's right go ahead and if I could make mention that this same uh event the elites actually seen with their own eyes messing with that son you know so this this is the Lord you know doing these things again man showing that these uh these heathen all right he's about to take you out man that's it in verse 26 it says this is the interpretation of the thing mane yahweh bashim yahweh shah have numbered thy kingdom and finished it to kill thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting and thou art found wanting all right and when you look up that word wanting it means lacking and where's this where's this place lacking it's lacking all right uh righteousness man all right yep. the, the 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 reverence to yahweh bashim yahweh shah man all right mm -hmm. this is why these kings this kingdom is going to fall just as all the other kingdoms in, in the past because they didn't put the how about shimmy was shot up as the true power of the earth man that's it that's why we say you gotta um you gotta brace for impact all right mm -hmm. through this through the spirit you gotta spiritually prepare for what's getting ready to go down you're talking about some of the worst times ever on the earth that are going to go down in our lifetime man this is not a game you know that's i right. want to add i want to add on to uh what you just you just made mention about how this kingdom babylon america has been found uh lacking and it's, it's lacking righteousness it's lacking order it's lacking the law statute commandments i just want to make one point in habakkuk i believe it's the first chapter right uh, i think it's one and four i want to say con because habakkuk one and four yep it reads it says therefore the law is slacked and judgment doeth never go forth right righteous judgment is not exercised in the society this is why this this society as we know it is about to pay dearly mm -hmm. right it says and judgment do have never go forth for the wicked do compass about the righteous therefore wrong judgment proceeded and this is why everything as we see it is backwards it's upside down it's been uh it's been corrupted you know the scriptures say warn to them that call evil good and good evil mm -hmm. you know pretty much wickedness is rewarded here you know debauchery and abomination is exalted right this is why wrong judgment proceedeth this right. is why the lord when he comes back what is he going to do he's going to turn as the lord is going to do he's going to turn this this uh this place upside down but he's going to put the world right side back up if you will yep. right he's going to establish righteousness he's going to start establish righteous order for the in order for the world to flourish again so like it told us in second Esther, the fourth chapter that the things on this side have to be turned up upside down in order for the good to be established right, right. And i'm going to add one more before we get into it i had a precept uh on that daniel uh 5 and 20 uh 26 i want to see what this says my sword it has written jeremiah 50 and 41 let me just check it out real quick mm -hmm. you know so this is Jeremiah 50. Let's see what it says. Do I want it? Jeremiah 50 and verse 41. Oh, man, that's a good one. Priest, can you read it? My sword is torn out. Yeah, I got you. But can Jeremiah. you read? Yeah, Jeremiah 50. We start at, um, start at 40 and read down to um, 42. Gotcha. This is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 40. As Yahweh Shem Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. That's right. Behold, a people shall come forth from the socket like shall come from the north, and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. And that's heavy, right? Behold, a people should come from the north, you know, dealing with the uh russians right mm -hmm. it says in a great nation and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth which um the scriptures tell us in isaiah 13 let me go there for you real quick and we'll finish it out God. isaiah not isaiah 13 but isaiah 14 because it said he had raised up the kings from the earth this is a quick precept isaiah 14 and um bear with me here we go Isaiah 14 and 9, it says, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at that coming, which is talking about Esau's destruction, how he's going to be brought down low. Mm -hmm. He's going to be brought to the grave. 
Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at that coming. It stirreth up the dead for thee. The dead represent the heathen, the heathen nations. That's right. Even all the chief ones of the earth, all the kings, right? They're being raised up. Proverbs uh, 21 and verse 1. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. He turneth, he turneth it whithersoever he will. You know, even all the chief one, even all the chief ones of the earth, it have raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations, right? So because why this is happening? Because what the kings of the earth are being prepared for World War III, Armageddon. That's right. Right. So you got a priest, you can finish it out. Yep. Back in Jeremiah 51 and it's like Jeremiah 50 and 41. Behold. A people shall come from the north and a great nation and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. They shall hold the bow and the lance. Mm -hmm. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea and they shall ride upon horses. Everyone put in array like a man unto the battle. It's like, like a man to the battle against the old daughter of Babylon. There you go, man. So, so that's them ICBM nuclear missiles, man. Yeah. That are being made ready to smite this place. All right. Because you got to understand that uh uh ancient Babylon, right, went down by the uh by the Persians and the Medes. Mm -hmm. All right. Ancient Babylon wasn't devoured by fire. You see, this daughter of Babylon, which is America, is gonna be is gonna be taken down by what by nuclear fire, man. That's right. Right. So this is talking about this time that's that's getting ready to go down. All right. But the point getting into this lesson here. All right. Hey, the 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 white the writing is on the wall. All right. Disaster is in, uh, is imminent and you must brace for impact through the spirit, man. So we just want to hit a couple of things here. I had a uh, real quick one if I can. Hey, go ahead, bro. Con, this is uh, Psalms 119 and 126. It is time for thee, Lord, to work. For they have made void thy law. So just you know, adding on to the uh to what you were saying about how you know the writing is on the wall, man. Hey, how about Shima is about to make a move on this place, man? Because as we see what these devils are uh positioned to do, they're trying to establish themselves as God on the on the earth, man. And That's by right. them doing this, they're trying to, you know, erase the most high's presence from the earth, man. All right. Yeah. So everything that we're seeing taking place is how about Shima is bringing judgment upon this wicked kingdom. That's it. Hey, that's the spirit. I just saw it here. The right on the wall. <laughs> we just read the scripture. That's the spirit. That's pretty much where the phrase come, uh, comes from. All right. Because remember, you know, uh, Belshazzar, he saw, you know, the, the writing on the wall. And then he he went down that very night by the exactly. uh, by uh, 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 Darius. When you read the next chapter and Daniel, the, uh, the, uh, the sixth chapter. You see? So that's the spirit. So anyway, getting into this thing. All right, so this video here is um, entitled The Collapse of America and Everything Wrong with Society Today, plus a hopeful way forward, all right, which we know that Babylon is not going to be healed. <laughs> nope. Right, so let's just go ahead and dissect some things and edify. And um, I don't want to be cheeky and say speaking directly to uh the you know the u.s government but if i were to be so bold so if this is that predictable moment where okay there are actions that we can take as a country that will either um help us keep um the world reserve currency status and there are actions that we can take that will cause us to lose that status more quickly it seems like Okay, uh, you've got the BRICS nations. They are moving away from the dollar. It seems like that has already that card has already been played. I don't know if you think there's anything that we can do to to make that easier, um, but certainly speaking to printing. So one thing that I've I've heard recently, and this is a really fascinating concept, that when you have other nations that are holding your currency, holding debt, as you said, uh, they're not like hoarding cash, but they're they're holding a lot of debt. If we print money, what we're essentially doing is um, externalizing inflation. So we are uh, causing a devaluation of that debt for all the countries that hold us. Now, we're in a moment with rising interest rates that's causing us to need to print, uh, but creating this really weird, difficult moment where as we print, then we have a need to raise interest rates. But the reason we're having to print is because we're raising interest rates. So it's a, it's a very difficult moment. Um, but if if we could 
going back to your idea, it's how we are with each other. If we could get people to come together in the middle, would one of the things we would want to convince the U.S. government to do is to be very cautious about devaluing the dollar? Is is that an important idea? Hey, and then like I did the lesson going into the parallels of ancient Rome and America today, it's the same thing. All right. Remember, they devalued the uh, what's it called? The uh, denarian. You know, they started taking the um, the silver away out of the coins, which devalued the money. And it's the same thing that America did with the dollar bill. All right. It's not backed by any gold and silver. And all this stuff is being engineered to to, to collapse. This is why, you know, just adding on real quick. As we already know, the U.S. government, the U.S. government's debt crisis, why bankruptcy is unavoidable and what it means for you all right so pretty much as you see in the picture is it's literally the economy is literally a uh, a ticking time bomb man you know because would, would you because uh, uh hyperinflation right now you know all of america is pretty much broke and debt people can't pay bills people can't pay rent all right this is a heavy thing going on right now in in, in, in multiple uh uh Bro's been talking about it. Everybody has been complaining all over the internet about how hard it is to live in America. All right, which is a sign that this shit is over with. You so got to see it. it. <laughs> hey, we going through it, so we know. <laughs> yeah. You know, so this shit is this shit is over with, man. You know, but uh, I had a quick precept of what you uh, you said about the parallels between uh, Rome and now. You got it. Um, this is Revelation chapter six, verse six, and it says, "And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say." A measure for wheat, sorry, a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Mm -hmm. And like you were saying, when you go into that word penny, uh, where we at? I'm pulling it up. Uh, the Greek word uh, G, uh, twelve twenty is denarion. Strong G, twelve twenty, denarion, denarion. And definition A says a Roman silver coin in the New Testament time. It took its name from being equal to 10 asses. A number after 217 BC increased to 16, about 3.898 grams or 0.1375 ounces. It was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire from the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. It would seem that a denarius was the original pay for a day's wages and like you were saying all right the way that the currency is being devalued now all right your your paycheck pretty much is, is barely able to keep you afloat nowadays man you yeah. know so that shows you how how far the money has devalued because here it is you have you have jobs giving people you know raises or whatnot but the cost of living is so high that it doesn't even matter anymore man like yeah everything is pretty much come becoming uh expensive yeah it's a you joke know? Yeah, you got to make life decisions on whether you want to pay bills, you know, uh, pay rent, get gas, eat. It's all, everything is a life decision now, man. So this shows you how, how this shit is done, man. That's it. Jake playing, playing hopscotch with the rent <laughs> and <Man>. groceries. <laughs> you know, and you got to make some hard choices, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> but what, that's what do you need more? That, that's it. That's it. But that's the, that's the time we're in right now, like you were saying. Like it says here that, that, that the, uh, that a denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages. But back then you could get pay. All right. Before they, you know, pretty much collapsed the economy, you could get paid and you would be able to, to afford your, uh, your daily necessities, things that you need to survive. Right? right. But same thing with America, you know, before we got to this point, you know, you were able to, um, you know, live comfortably off, you know, 70 grand, 60 grand a year or whatnot. Now that's that's damn near impossible. Shit, it, it wasn't too long ago where you could you could make it off just minimum wage. Come. You know, shit, that's them days are gone. Come. Exactly. So that shows you the parallels. Matter of fact, let me add one more. Uh is that was it Ecclesiastes, the first chapter about uh nothing new under the sun? Yep. Thanks, right. This is uh Ecclesiastes one, and um, because hey, this happened before. Oh, nah. All right, yeah, Ecclesiastes nine. 1 and 9, and it reads, it says, the thing that have been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. So it's, this this place is, is going out exactly 
just like the ancient Roman Empire did. Mm -hmm. All right. Inflation and devaluing the currency was the main thing that brought down the um, the uh, Roman economy, if you will, alongside of the Roman army spreading their uh, armies too thin and, and many other things. But anyway, it says. Uh, verse 10, Ecclesiastes 1 and 10, it says, is there any is there anything whereof it may be said, see, this is new. It have it had been already of old of old time which was before us. So this, hey, these, these chain of events, if you will, have already happened before and they're happening again now, right? And if I could add, you, uh, you average Americans are still being, you know, uh, fooled by the facade to think that the economy is still good because you have Kamala Harris or, or Trump get on these podiums and lie to you about how, you know, jobs are still, you know, uh, being produced, how, you know, they're, they're promising these, uh, these promises of how you know they're gonna make you know your your lives better, but it's all it's all bullshit though because this, this shit is done, man. I got yes. real quick. They got this it. Is, uh, Ezekiel thirteen and verse ten. It says because even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others dabbed it with untempted mortar. Say unto them which dab it with untempted mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and yea, all great hailstones shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Because yep. when you go into this economy, man, it's, it's it's pretty much you know being set up to to fall. You know, Taj Mahal was talking about this uh this this past week how they lowered the interest rates, and people from the outside looking in would think that's a good thing, but it's really Esau Edom setting up this this economy to pretty much implode on itself, man. Yes, sir. You know. That's it. And see, and then another reason they did that, too, as I as I was reading, they were saying uh, them lowering the interest rates is just, you know, making more Americans comfortable mm -hmm. bar and borrowing more money. Mm -hmm. You know, because, hey, if you got if you got a low if you got a low interest rate, you know, the payback isn't that high. Right. You know, so people are just like, well, shit, I borrow another hundred grand, yep. <laughs> you know, another 80 grand just to get in debt. <laughs> right? right it's crazy like you said it's the okie dog man but um i got something real quick before we go back to the video mm -hmm. this is jeremiah chapter 9 and verse verse 6 and it reads it says thy habitation is in the midst of deceit through deceit they refuse to know me saith the lord yahweh everything about this system this so-called american life is a goddamn lie man <laughs> it's a facade man and people are seeing that now. The American dream is a is a is, is just a dream. It's a nightmare. All right. As you see, we got on the screen here the, the poll of more Americans believe university de degrees are losing value. Yeah, that that piece of paper that you you know put yourself two hundred thousand dollars in debt for ain't worth shit. Nope. You didn't went to school for four, five, six years to get this, you know, this bachelor's degree, this this uh, uh, master's degree, PhD, just to be working at Applebee's. Mm -hmm. All right, just to be at Best Buy selling le electronics and shit, man. A lot of these people who got these degrees are not, they don't even have jobs related to the degrees. Nope. And that's a common thing in America, man. So it's like, what was the purpose of even going to college? <laughs> you, you've been bamboozled by the so called American dream, man. Damn. Because as, as we, you know, are realizing, you know, all this, this was all a plan just to get you Americans in debt. That's right, it. To get, to get you more and more, you know, uh, in the in the hole, man. You That's know? it. Because when you really get into it, like it was said, uh, I, I forgot the president. I want to say it was, um, I ain't going to get to now. I, I forget. But he made a point pretty much saying that uh, uh, the uh, thorough no uh, knowledge of the Bible uh, is worth more than any college degree. Because we understand with this understanding from the scriptures that prophecy it, it takes you know uh it takes us to a whole never another level of understanding because we see what's really going on man all right we're not we're not uh, no longer in the rat race man we see the uh the end result of where all this is going which is destruction man that's it yeah, yeah theodore that was, roosevelt yeah yeah that was the yeah, theodore roosevelt yep there's a reason why he said this right a thorough a thorough knowledge of the bible is worth more than a college education all right. So what did he know? Exactly. He was so, in on it. You know, he was he in on it. Know what's up. Exactly. So let's go back to that uh, video. All right. Where we at?
it's more basic than that and it's um more simple but it's also more difficult um what the reason cycles exist is that the next stage has been determined by what has already happened in the prior stage so <clears throat> We are in debt a lot. You can't change that. We got a lot of debt. Yeah, let's add. Let's add them to that. You damn right. You got a lot of debt. <laughs> That's an understatement. That's an understatement. Hey, hey, these these Edomites are in shambles, man. Right. You know, this is Habakkuk two, in verse six, and it reads: It says, "Shall not all these take up a parable against him, and a taunting proverb against him, and say, Woe to him.'" that increaseth that which is not his. Mm -hmm. How long? And to him that laid of himself with thick clay, all right? And that thick clay goes back to what? The debt that America's in, all right? The trillions upon trillions of dollars of debt of this, that this place is in that can't be paid off, all right? That word for debt, it says, weight of pledges, heavy debts. You know, you have some preacher want to say? No, nah, you got it. Come on. All right, so there you have it. A whole lot of fucking debt, man. All right, Salakia, we're going to get to that. But going back to, uh, just going back here, I want to read a little bit of this before we go back to the video. It says, the U.S. government's debt crisis, why bankruptcy, bankruptcy is unavoidable and what it means for you. And I just want to jump down. It says here, it says the U.S., it says the U.S. government can no longer delay or disguise its impending bankruptcy, right? Can't hide it no more, man. I was talking to a, I was talking to a brother yesterday, and um, he was trying to cash a check, right? And the banks wouldn't cash the check. Mm. He had to go to different banks and try to see if he could get it cash. And then the bank that he banks with was like, "Look, it's going to take about three days to uh, clear." You know, he couldn't go nowhere else. You know, so a lot of people that have been having a hard time of like, you know, making financial uh, uh, transactions, business with these banks because. It's some it's some funny shit going on. These these banks are about to crash out. But anyway, right. It says the US government can no longer delay its disguise delay or disguise its impending bankruptcy. The US federal government has the biggest debt in the history of the world and is continuing to grow at a rapid, unstoppable pace. Right? It says, um, let's jump down here. I just want to read that point. I should have had it highlighted. So it says, where are we at? Yeah, so it says, when politicians care, carelessly spend and print money measured in the trillions, they are, they are, in, danger, they are in dangerous territory. It is, and, that, and that is precisely what the fiat currency system has enabled the U.S. government to do. It says, today, the U.S. federal debt has gone parabolic and is over $35, $35 trillion dollars. Man, it says to put that in perspective, if you earned one dollar a second, 24, 7, 365 a year, about 31 million per year, it would take over one million, one hundred thousand, one hundred nine thousand and eighty years to pay off the U.S. federal debt. You see that? Yes. So there, that's impossible. Showing you that the, uh, the scriptures say about the uh, that grievous wound. Mm -hmm. There's no hill in this place. Right. It says, and that's with the unrealistic assumption that it would stop growing. In short, the U.S. government can't repay its debt. It can't even pay the interest expense without going further into debt. Default is inevitable. Boom. Mm -hmm. So that's all we need to know. Mm -hmm. So so what's the next thing coming? All right. The, 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 the MOTB. All right. A new form of currency. And if you say, what could you do? I mean, two things come to mind. What you could do is you could be financially strong and you can not use um, financial sanctions as a weapon to scare the holders of those bonds. But to be financially strong requires you to not spend more than you earn. That means you either have to cut your spending or raise your earnings. Okay, that's okay. That ain't easy. <laughs> okay, 
Okay, so are we going to cut our spending? Um, uh, oh, oh, uh, okay, now you look at it. What are you going to... Uh, infrastructure programs, I don't know, poverty transfers, defense spending. Okay, what, what are we going to cut? Um, the, the world... Governments have the same basic economics as um, people, except for the fact that they could take money from one person and shift, give it to another, and they can print money. That's it. And so when you look at this, um, okay, you have that gap. You can eliminate the gap by taking money from some and eliminating another and not spending much. Okay. Okay, that's not easy, right? Okay, okay, what are you going to... Most governments now uh, don't think, how much money do I have to spend and then how do I prioritize that? They think... I need to spend on this, I need to spend on that, and I need to spend on that, and they spend on it. And then they either produce it, they produce a deficit, and then you either have to pay it back with hard money or printed money, and that's situation. So when you say, what could we do? Well, you've got to get financially strong in a politically fragmented environment in which everybody wants more and you and you have to uh, you know like be a higher percentage of world trade so that everybody wants to use your currency and um be um and not threaten the holders of that bonds with freezing their assets it is uh it's a tall order in this moment. Um, I it has become so clear to me in the last month since you and I uh, saw each other how important the reason that you keep coming back to it all comes down to how people treat each other. So in this moment, um, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but it does feel like the die is cast a little bit. I don't see how we pull ourselves back from the precipice because, to your point about being. Um, fiscally responsible, like we'd have to get into a position where we're making more than we spend. I want to circle around to something as you were talking, you mentioned infrastructure and it got me thinking, man, real quick, I got to get it because it's not going to happen, man. Yeah. All right. Esau don't got the fucking answers, man. <laughs> we do spirit of the Lord. All right. Jeremiah 51 in verse eight, and it reads, it says Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? take balm for her pain if so she may be healed it says verse 9 we would have healed babylon but she is not healed forsake her and let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reach up unto heaven and is lifted up even to this even to the sky so pretty much as we know it through the spirit of power you have shimel shad there is no solution all right no, printing more money, quantitative easing, you know, being financially responsible, whatever he was saying, none of that's going to work. This system was designed to crash, right? right? This right. is why we're telling our people, you so-called Negro, Latino, Native Americans, and Hispanics, the scriptures say, uh, uh, forsake her. Mm -hmm. Meaning you got you to pull your, 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 your hopes and dreams out of this place, man. That's right. All right? There, there's, there's nothing else here. The Lord, the Lord is showing all of us that, look, Hey, this is it here. All right. Come back to him, serve him in spirit and truth, right? Or you're gonna fall with this place. All right. You got it, priest. Kanye, I got a couple articles I want to read real quick. Cause um what what we're seeing is the pretty much the destruction of this economy, and it's all predicated upon them, you know, going with this fiat uh fiat money, which you mentioned earlier. So when you go into the history of paper money it always came to a point to where, you know, that system crashed. Uh -huh. You look at the history, and I just wanted to read a couple points with that. So uh, this is from uh, hardmoneyhistory.com, and pretty much is, is titled The Short History of Fiat Currency Failures, Nine Currencies That Have Collapsed. Now, 
uh, I can send you the, the article after uh, we get through. Cool. But, um, I just want to go down to the conclusion because it goes into the different different countries that tried to adopt this and it, it always failed. So the conclusion, it says the success of fiat currency relies on the ability of the monetary authority to maintain the soundness of the currency over a long period. Some governments and monetary authorities can keep a fiat currency alive for for quite a long time, especially if it has some degree of gold backing. Others are far more are far more short lived. And as we know, all right, Esau took all that gold backing out when he removed the gold standard and created the uh, the FRN. Yep. It says, um, the, sorry, yeah, the FRN. Yeah, it says. Um, however, the temptation of money printing that fiat currency allows is extremely uh, seductive. Even those who understand the need for restraint eventually give in because this is, you know, Esau playing with that Babylonian money magic because they know that they were able to pretty much, you know, create money out of thin air. And this is, you know, a high level witchcraft that we see taking place, which is going to lead to, all right, the RFID chip, which is the mark of the beast. It says uh, fiat currencies come and go. What always remains is hard money such as gold and silver. And it says the U.S. dollar began its life as a fixed weight of silver. Then it became a fixed weight of gold. Now it is a purely fiat currency without being bound to hard money. So pretty much it's, it's worthless, man. You yes, know? Sir. And when you go into the cycle of uh, fiat currency, it's, it's a five-stage cycle. And it says, uh, this is from a uh, bullionstar.com the five stage cycle a uh, life cycle of a fiat currency it says gold and paper currencies have been at war for more than 3000 years when currencies are pegged to gold they appear to coexist pe- uh, peacefully nevertheless when the pegs cease internally they uh, it's like internationally they become each other's nemesis and thus began the battle for monetary supremacy what we see taking place on the world scale which is why you see countries like brits you know, form the alliances because they see that the petrol dollar is worthless now, man. Sure. Sure. It says a study on the history of money and its relationship with inflation is essential to appreciate the role of gold as money. For paper currency, there's always a boom bust cycle. Now, when you look up what a boom bust cycle is, real quick, yep. it says the boom and bust cycle is a key characteristic of capitalist economies and is sometimes synonymous with the business cycle. During the boom, the economy grows, jobs are plentiful, and the market brings high returns to investors, which was pretty much the beginning of uh, America through, like, the first uh, few industrial revolutions. And as Esau, you know, transitioned into, you know, the Federal Reserve System, all right, that began to bring in the bus cycle, which is why you see, you know, uh, the economy begin to go under. It says, in the subsequent bus, the economy shrinks, People lose their jobs and investors lose money, which is what we're in in that uh, that, that cycle right now of the the, uh, the bus cycle. So, just real quick, going over these five stages. Stage one is fueled by optimism and euphoria as politicians promise growth stimulus with the least amount of pain and discipline. In the beginning, there will be promise of fiscal responsibility to print only what the country needs and live within the budget means. However, such period is usually short lived as politicians and central bankers will soon give in to temptation to print more money so as to stimulate growth. In stage two, restrictions will be slowly removed from the currency creation process. The idea of paying off debt is no longer important as compared to growth. As a result, growth becomes the single most important driver of the fiat system. As currencies gradually lose value due to declining purchasing power, People have to work longer hours to maintain their standard of living. Exactly. Stage people and we, people working overtimes, people working 12-hour shifts every day. Man, two, three jobs, gig, gig jobs, trying to make a side hustle. You're still not able to keep afloat. Crazy. Stage three is the gambling stage where excessive liquidity makes its way into the stock market and real estate market. Growth will start to slow down, and therefore, more money needs to be created to stimulate growth, which is why they're just bringing money out of thin air. This means that interest rates must be maintained at artificially low levels, as we talked about earlier, mm-hmm. 
with interest rates kept low at the same time there's significant money printing people will have to take risk on the stock market or real estate market just to keep up with inflation in stage three people also start to borrow more because of wealth effect with with the bubbles causing them to feel like they have more money than they do in terms of purchasing power what you said earlier yep stage four is the penultimate state of the fiat cycle sluggish growth in western countries force financial institutions to try to make money through other means than financing and brokerage fees at this stage corruption prevails fundamentals are ignored and wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few at this point individuals must look out for themselves by not trusting the government or financial advisors those who fail to do so will suffer potential loss of wealth in the latter part of the stage four and stage five. Stage five occurs when there is hyperinflation, which is the worst economic phase of the fiat cycle. In stage five, the currency becomes worthless. At this stage, precious metals are often reoccurring in the monetary system to be used as currency or be used to back up the currency. Keep yep. in mind that hyperinflation has occurred at least 56 times during the last two centuries. So essentially, you know, tying this all together, we are we are in, in the latter stages of stage four entering into stage five, as we're going to get into with the rest of the lesson, showing you how this place is done. It's done. It's done. And, and, and uh, stage four, stage five, as you read, made me think about James, the fifth chapter, where it says your riches are corrupted. Yep. And your garments are moth eaten. All right. The, 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 the dollar holds no value. That's right. See that it's just it's just it's just monopoly money, you know, and that's the thing. It's not backed by anything, and eventually it's gonna uh, it's gonna be the the uh, the demise of many people, right? But uh, I got this precept here. Unless you had anything else, I now you gotta go ahead. I got the precept precept here from the brother Naquam here. It says Zephaniah one and ten, and it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there should be a noise of a cry from the fish gate. And a howling from the second and great crashing from the hills, right? Going into this economy pretty much crashing and burning. All right. That that um that great um depression, if you will, is gonna happen again. Right. And I saw I thought this was pretty heavy too. This person here, King Asher, he said, uh the reality hit home when an unusual hiring decision was made public recently, in which a 24-year-old pursuing a master's degree in physics awaited a new job as a high school janitor in China through. <laughs> God damn. Yeah, damn, boy. You got a physics, a physics degree working as a janitor, bro. Hey, that's, yeah. that's the epitome of a failure, bro. That's this crazy. Is, this is what we talking about. Damn. This is exactly what we talking about right here, man. The uh, matter of fact, let me pull that back up in the screen. It's in the screen. There you go. Yeah. This damn, is what we talking crazy. about. You know? Right? These degrees... From these uh, Ivy League schools, these top universities don't mean shit, right? <laughs> People are through, you know? But oh, anyway. Man. I got uh, one more for you. Oh, you got to go ahead. Yeah, Ezekiel chapter 7, verse 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls neither feel their bowels because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. You know, so it's pretty much, man, this money is going to be worthless to try to save you people. So like the video we were just playing was you had the Edomites trying to come up with a game plan to try to, you know, <laughs> to recover. Right. It's, it's, this is done. It's it, man. Y'all about Shemel Shai, like we said earlier, he's putting the fish and touches on Babylon, man. That's it. Play, I'll play a little bit more, you know, and then we'll move on. Mm -hmm. Just want to get the main points from this. It's about a 24-minute video about okay what are things that uh we would need to go right so i think everybody is aware and i've heard you say that there there are changes that are going to need to be made to capitalism in order to bring back a thriving middle class and the importance of the thriving middle class and you've defined the things you know again staying to the theme of principles here of uh, the three things that we need to do to be strong as a country or for any country to be strong uh, and you said two parents in the home uh <laughs> great public education and then equal opportunity not happening jack <laughs> <All right. laughs> hey maybe we think it's uh eddie also i'm gonna post this on the whatsapp but this is real shit uh it says the economy is so bad you can't even support a second family in secret anymore 
<laughs> right, right. Exactly. Man. Where where do you see us on those? Are we moving in the right direction, moving in the wrong direction? Well, again, uh, you know, maybe I aspire too much to two parents in the home. <laughs> Um, it, it's certainly better if you have two loving parents raising a family, that's, that's good, but maybe that's too much to ask for. Um, but what would a society pr uh, produce single parent homes, right? Right. Nobody wants to get married. You see what I'm saying? That's the state of America right now. Mm -hmm. You know, that's out the window. Right. Right. Which is funny because this is why you see a lot of women making these videos and how they're tired of being independent now, because they're starting to realize that. Being on being by themselves ain't ain't cutting it no more. That's you know, it. I'm, I'm tired of being. Uh, I want to. I want to be in my soft area. You know, I want a man to support me and all that because they see that this shit getting real. That's it. That's it. I play about. I play about two more minutes and then we'll we'll wrap this up. You yeah. know. But in other words, good parental guidance. You know, okay, you're raised well. You're educated well. You can go to a public school that educates you well, and you have good guidance. So you're well raised in a healthy environment and not only do you learn um you know skills and and all that but you learn how to behave well to with each other so you learn civility and um and um so you come out capable and civil um to a land of opportunity in which you can you know work and 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 have a good environment um, and really that's all you need if a society does that, right. right? Um, and I think, you know, where we, you know, the things that are going on, you know, um, education in a lot of public education is, um, a, it's deteriorating. It's a real problem. It's bullshit. Right. Um, my wife works to help um, the poorest school districts, the poorest people uh, in the state of Connecticut. Um, and uh, the state of Connecticut is usually, it's always one, two, or three in terms of the highest per capita income. Um, and in the state of Connecticut, uh, as of the last survey, 22% of the high school students have either dropped out of high school. Whoa. Uh, or have uh, absentee rates which are greater than 25% and are failing classes. I want to add on to that. Ed, Ed. The educational system is finished. Matter of fact, let me, uh, I have some here real quick. Uh, I saw this the other day. It says Chicago teachers confessed they were told to give illegals passing grades, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, everything about the system is done, man. Damn. You know, let's go back. Salakia, so we will pull it back up. So, at they're living in, pop, they're living in areas that don't have the things I'm talking about about parents' nutrition and so on. You're talking about Jake, all right? The Jake communities. The right. poor communities, as he was talking about, it's your Israelites. Um, and there's not adequate resources for them. For example, during COVID, um, we um, we found that 60,000 students didn't have uh, computers or connectivities to take classes. And the government wasn't going to provide it. So philanthropically, we, we bought 60,000 computers and give it to the kids and one, but we can't, you know, we can't do that, you know. So our society is, um, when you look at this, um, you see um, drugs, drug problems. Um, you see how the cities are changing. Um, you know, the cleanliness of the cities, the education levels of the cities, mental illness, um, crimes, and so on. Um, you're not seeing, you know, you're seeing people fighting with each other a lot. 
Um, not all the time. There are wonderful places in the United States. You know? Right, right. So he's he's getting into the dynamics of what was wrong with the society. And, and this is everything that we speak about, man. Yeah. Right. This is why this how you know that this place is on its way out. And I want to just move on from this. We ain't got to watch the whole thing, but you, you get the point here. Right. Um, just adding on real quick, as we were talking about priests, uh, this came out the other day as well. With a, Well, actually a, a month or so ago, but it says. U.S. government resumes humanitarian entry program from citizens of four countries. Right. I think it was Cuba. Let me see if it lists the country. Here we go. So it says um, it says the program is part of an effort by the administration of the Dominic, the Democratic President Joe Biden to increase legal pathways to the United States and, dis and discourage illegal border crossings at the U.S.-Mexico border. But has been criticized by Republicans as overly permissive. It says the program, the point. It says the program allows up to 30,000 people in, in the United States each month from Cuba, Haiti, Nicaragua, how you say that word, Nicaragua, um, yeah. Venezuela, if they have sponsors to meet. And if, so like if they have sponsors and meet other conditions, sponsors must be in the United States legally and have sufficient financial resources to support the person they are sponsoring for the duration of their stay, right? So pretty much they're just allowing, as we already know, people to enter through enter through the borders, man. This is why you're seeing the crime uh, uh, rate increase. This is why these uh, so-called illegals are receiving free housing, government aid, all of this shit that's bringing the divide amongst the American people, which mm -hmm. is playing into what? The role of the collapse of the society, right? And as we see it, Right here's an example of what's to come, and this is just the uh, this is just the beginning, right? This is a Philadelphia. Right, so you know this is the, the this is the beginning of of just. Many sorrows to come. I want to read this headline here. It says, if our cities already look like they belong in Grand Theft Auto, what would they look like once the economy implodes? <laughs> man, man. You, know? you got a preview. Uh, that's a preview. Because hey, these people go, they're going to go crazy, man. Because here it is. People are wilding out while there's still food in the stores. You know, there's still some type of order in society. So once this, once this thing goes under, man, you're going to see the true beast of these people come out. Man, you know, get right. that in. Um, you got a scripture, uh, second Ezra 15. Yeah, yeah, get that real quick. Come on, this is second Ezra 15 and verse 14. It says, Woe to the world and them that dwell therein, for the sword and their destruction draws nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hand. It yep. says, For there shall be sedition among men. And invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. This is you what's going it. on, man. All right, because here it is: you're letting these um, you letting these migrants come in, and then they're 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 giving them all this aid, housing, you know, free money, and so these uh these Americans that's been here, all right, they see that the treatment that these migrants are getting, they're they're starting to uh, lash out, man, you know. And these uh these politicians, these you know your your law enforcement, your mayors and all that, they are gonna start catching the brunt end of that, man. And you start you see examples of that when you watch the um the Batman, the Dark Knight trilogy. I believe it was the last one, the Dark Knight yeah. Rises. Yeah. Like you saw when anarchy began to you know uh take you know take the streets by storm, they was going and pretty much you know uh, judging them them politicians you know on their own, killing them and whatnot, you know. So this is what's going to start taking place. The more and more this shit gets bad out here. So, you got it. Says, verse seventeen: A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able, but because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, their houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid because we know that Esau's allowing this to take place because it's going to get so disorderly that they're going to have to initiate martial law 
which is going to pretty much, you know, force order to be, you know, uh, done in the street, which is <clears throat> going to cause these UN troops that are, are being funded over here and disguised as these migrants to be uh, to, to pretty much come out and regulate the order in the streets, man. That's it. That's it, man. They're going to have to lock this shit down. Yeah. All right. So we see we see the writing on the wall. We see it coming, man. Civil war, civil unrest, sedition amongst men. People are not obeying authority, not not obeying a, a government order. All right. So this is just the beginning of, of many sorrows. All right. Mm -hmm. You got to understand, hey, these are uh, these new generation of uh, uh, little niggas, man. Hey, when it go down, man, it's going to be like fucking hyenas out here in the streets. Uh, look look what they're doing already. You have in the different uh, parts of uh, America, you have the smash and grabs. You know, you have the, the protest. They, they, they're they destroying cities over sports games and stuff like that, man. Come on. You know? So like like the title said, how much more will this look like when the economy implodes, man? You know? Which, uh, going a little bit more on this, uh, second as is 15 and 19. It says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor and shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil the goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And so yep. they're already wilding out while it's still somewhat, you know, order in the earth, man. So how much more when this shit gets bad out here, man? When when there's no when there's no more food in the stores, when there's no more, you know, aid to be given to them, when the, when the, when they uh, they wake up and the bank accounts is zero, these people are gonna are gonna start, you know, uh, turning into the them beasts that we read about. Breaking into people's houses, you know, killing people like we saw in these different purge movies, Civil War, these different anarchy movies. That's going to be real life and, and, and real soon. That's it, man. All structured, all set up to go down this exact way, this yep. exact fashion, right? So anyway, moving on here, all right? News and prophecy. There's more news. It says the UN lays the foundation for a new world order, all right? Which we know, according to prophecy, that this devil is on he, his time is short. All right, so he has to uh, he has to make that move. Matter of fact, let me get a scripture. All right, Psalm one hundred and forty. All right, this is Psalm one hundred and forty in verse seven and eight, and it reads: "It says, O power of the Lord, Yahweh Shemuel Washai, the strength of my salvation." Thou has covered my head in the day of battle. All right. This is why I said, hey, you, you got to brace for the impact. Mm -hmm. All right. Verse eight, the point, grant not, O Lord, Yahweh Shemuel Washai, the desires of the wicked. Further not his wicked device, lest they exalt themselves. Salah. And this is part of the uh, the devil. This is part of Esau's wicked device that he's trying to bring, uh, bring to pass. Mm -hmm. You know, the Lord is going to frustrate him that he cannot uh, uh, perform his enterprise. All right. So they're ready to they laying it out. It says the UN has just adopted the quote pact for the future, which will lay the foundation for what they call a new global order. You see, it says the pact of uh, for the future was adopted on September 22nd, and the mainstream media in Western world almost entirely ignored the news. And there's a reason why. Yeah, Diddy. <laughs> right, right. As you see here, Diddy was the uh, was the main distraction. Right, and that nigga, hey, that nigga nasty, man. <laughs> it says, um, it says, unfortunately, most people have never heard about the pact for the future, and therefore, there was very little public debate about whether or not we should be adopting a document with, which lays the foundation for a new world order, man. So, hey, the the uh, the image of the beast uh, speaks. You know, everything is coming to pass. The uh, the MOTB the, the the chip, okay, uh, uh, um, the AI uh, surveillance, mm -hmm. you know that same social credit score system that uh, chi uh, that China has prepared, America has adopted. All right, so we're moving into that uh, that transition of a new age. So once right. again, this is how you know that what that we are, you know, pretty much at the uh, the end of this man's um, empire, if you will, you know. And I got a quick precept. All right, just going in the spirit here. Uh, this is the book of Job, chapter 20, okay, and straight to the point. Job 20 and 22, it says, In the fullness of his sufficiency, he shall be in straits. Every hand of the wicked shall come upon him. And right now, we're at the fullness of his sufficiency, right? 
I'm pull this up real fast. See what it says. All right, that's not what I want. Let's try. Um, I actually found something. Let me see if I can pull it up online. Come Bear on. with me, priest. Fullness of his sufficiency. All right. Let me see. Bear with me one second. I just wanted to read like some. Um, here we go. I think this was it here. Some of the uh, commentary on that verse. Right. Bear with me one second. I had it pulled up before. I'm just trying to see if I could find it. Yeah, here we go. So right here it says um, in the pulpit commentary, it says in the fullness of his sufficiency, he should be in straits. It says even while his wealth and prosperity remain, he shall find himself in difficulties since every hand of the wicked or rather every hand of one, of one that is wretched shall come upon him, i.e. all those who are poor and miserable, especially such as he has made poor and miserable, shall turn against him and vex him. And that's what's, what's going to happen, yeah. right? Jake is going to rise up as you see these nations are rising up. So right, yeah. right when he thinks that he's about to really, you know, take off, so to speak, this is where he's going to fall. Yeah. You know, so we're, we're at the peak of his... uh of his power we're at the height of his rulership right now and, he, and eventually he's going to be in straits as we read here sure. right let me finish it out for you so it says uh back in job matter of fact let me just pull it back up so like you i use that same tab to get to where i was at so let's pull it back up again it says job 20 so now you get it this is what the scriptures is talking about it says uh job 20 and 22 it says in the fullness of his sufficiency he should be in straits Every hand of the wicked should come upon him. Verse 23, it says, when he's about to fill his belly, yeah, right? Right when he's when he's about to eat, right? Yahweh Shai shall cast the fury of, of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. Right when he's about to cut into that damn steak, that bloody ass steak, right? <laughs> the Lord gonna, gonna send a fire on him. This is how you know everything is close. Based off what's happening in the news. And the prophecies and the things that's going on globally. It says, verse 24, he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him through, which is going to be those missiles. Mm -hmm. It says, it is drawn, it cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All right? So he's not going to escape. Yep. You see? And that's the point there. So so right when, they, right when they figure it out, right when they think they have it, is when he's going to be destroyed, is the point. Right, it says, um, and that was it out of that. You had anything you want to add in there, priest? Wow, that was it on that. All right, so we're moving on. And the final thing that we want to touch on here in this news and prophecy is the situation with uh, the so called Israelis, the small hats, the 1948ers. All right, because right now they're feeling the uh, they're feeling the brunt of the heat right now. Because mm -hmm. right now, the, the world, as it told us in Job 18. That, uh, that he should be chased out of the world. Everybody across the planet Earth is coming up against him. So here it says here from Collapse News, it says Israel's entire occupation of Palestine since 1948 ruled illegal by the UN. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Which makes me think about what Ezekiel 36, you know, how it talks about how uh, uh, pretty much. Uh, all right. Matter of fact, let me get it. Sorry. Right. You got anything you want to say? Uh, I'm looking, looking for something to add to that. Okay, Ezekiel 36 and 2, it says, Thus said the Lord power, Yahweh Shemel Shah, because the enemy have said against you, Aha, even the ancient high places are ours in possession. So the enemy of the Israelites, of the true biblical Israelites, are in possession of the ancient high places, which was like the Holy Land. Right. The point. Verse 5, Ezekiel 36 and 5, Therefore, thus said the Lord power, Yahweh Shemel Shah, surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and against all Idumia, which is Greek for Esau, Edom, which have appointed my land into, into their possession with the joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out as a cast it out for a prey. So we understand, according to prophecies, that the Idumians, the Edomites, are the ones that are in possession of the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. Right. Esau is in possession in possession of that land. Right. So this is why all these things are coming out against us. This is why war is being prepared against them. Because the true Israelites are not governing governing 
the Holy Land. Right. You know? Go ahead, Freeze. Yeah, because hey, me, uh, Quan Walker, and Taz wanted the lesson earlier because you had um, Israel. They they just committed one of the uh, the most killings that they've done since the whole thing of you know them them starting to do this bombing. And like you said, now the rest of the world is starting to look at these uh, these damn Amalekites as the problem. Now this was from uh, True Story America. It says UN Council of Human Rights finds Israel guilty of war crimes and crimes against humanity against Palestine, you know, or Palestinians. Mm -hmm. So this goes to show you that look, the Lord is setting Esau up to be the enemy of the world, man. Because these other nations are starting to realize that this man's the devil, man. You know, right. so right. this is all leading to from the the economy to this this genocide that they're committing. All this is road to World War Three. That's it. I got a quick scripture for you. I want to get that one in numbers. Where it talks about his latter end. You know where that's at? Uh, you're not talking about 35 or 33, is it? It might be. Let me see. Hold on. I'm going to pull it up. Uh, bear with me one second. Yeah, numbers, 20, like numbers 24 and 20. 24 and 25. All right. Numbers 24 and 20. You can speak on it. I'm going to read it real fast. So this is, um, this is a uh, matter of fact, we can read up mm -hmm. going into uh, what was, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Balaam having the vision of the future. Yep. Right. So straight to the point, numbers 24, 16, he says, he said, he have said, which heard the words of the most high and knew the knowledge of the most high, which saw the vision of the almighty falling into a trance, but having his eyes open. I, see, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him and not nigh. There shall come a star out of Jacob and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. This is speaking about Yahweh Shai. That's right. Right? So he saw Yahweh Shai come in the future uh, uh, conquering the planet. Yep. It says, and shall smite the corners of Moab and shall destroy all the children of, of, of Sheth. Verse 18, and Edom shall be a possession. Right? Edom is going to be part of our... Uh, our yeah. possession they're going to be our slaves man alongside with the other nations mm -hmm. and edom should be a possession seer also should be a possession for his enemies and israel should do uh val valiantly yep verse 19 out of jacob shall come he that shall have dominion all right uh, uh daniel uh, uh chapter 2 verse 44 yahweh Shah is going to have dominion everlasting dominion over the nations that's right and shall destroy him that remaineth of the city. The point, verse 20, Numbers 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. Right. Because the Halabashi now stated that he that we shall have war with Amalek forever. All right. So that the Lord is going to unleash his uh his indignation upon Amalek. So, like you said, when, when we get uh Edom in the kingdom, all right. They're going to be our slaves, but after a thousand years, all right, all of Esau shall be done away with, man. That's it. That's it, man. So the point is that Amalek's latter end is that he's going to perish forever. This is why the war, everybody's coming against him now, as, we, as I was talking about, Obadiah, the first verse. Mm -hmm. All right, so Edom will be humble. Yeah, there you go. The vision of Obadiah, thus said the Lord Power, Yahweh Shem was shot concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai, an ambassador sent among the heathen, arise ye and let us rise up against her in battle. This is what the nations are doing. All right. They're rising up against Babylon, America, and they're also rising up against Israel. Uh -huh. Right. It says, behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. And this is what we see in these news articles. All right. These small hatters are greatly despised there, there there's a great cry going out against them across the world man to stop these wars that are going on in gaza the right. killing of innocent children uh people families the destruction of cities hospitals right and that and that devil not a jew uh, uh he said they're not gonna stop yeah you know just like you say you don't he don't care you know how many civilians he killed too you know exactly their whole mo is to, to wipe out that land so they can claim control of it that's it that's it. So it was what it's all about there, man. So pretty much that's it right there. Do you, you had anything else you want to add in there? Nah, that was it. That's it, man. So hey, his time is up. 
All right. That's why, as I said before, my previous lesson, you have to pay, you have to continue to pay attention on the conflict that's going on in the so-called Middle East. That's the uh, that's the catalyst. Mm -hmm. All right. Because remember, the Lord said he was going to gather. Uh, matter of fact, let's just get it. Instead of quoting Zephaniah three and uh, Zephaniah three and eight. Mm -hmm. So Zephaniah 3 and 8, and it reads, it says, Therefore, wait ye upon me, say of the Lord, Yahweh Shema was shy, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations. Where is he gathering them at? In the valley of Yahweh Shapat, so called Middle East. That my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour out upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. So this is what the Lord is going to do. All right. Everything is centered around the so-called uh, uh, Middle East, where the Lord is going to gather all the nation's armies. Because even right now, you can look in the news, not to rant, but you can look it up. More soldiers, right, just to make an example, most more soldiers sent to Middle East. Right. Let's see any news articles pop up. You see, this is in the news. Salakia. Right. This actually uh, two days ago, a day ago, it says U.S. It says U.S. to sin. I don't like how that's set up. Let me get another article. Hold on. Let's go to this one. New York Times here. All right. So it says. It says Pentagon to send more U.S. troops to Middle East as tensions rise. You see, this is all leading to Armageddon, World War Three, more troops. Because before they said they sent about five hundred thousand, half a million troops over there. I want to say or either either the Middle East or Ukraine. I forgot one of the two. But the fact that these these soldiers are being they're being shipped out. Why everybody's being distracted? They're setting up the troops for this final world war. And just to add to that, it was, uh, I sent a TikTok that was pretty funny because you had Kamala Harris lying, talking about that there that there's no troops being sent over to anywhere to where they're actively fighting at, and then you had the troops that's actually over there in you know those different lands like pretty much call her out for lying because it's like yo we ain't why are we over here for if you said we ain't doing this oh yeah yeah I you remember know? that yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> so just going to show you bro Esau was he he's done man. Mm -hmm. Yep, they them them uh small hats killed over five hundred people. They downplaying. They said at least three hundred fifty people. Oh yeah. They, 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 they said they said it was over five hundred. It's probably more than that. It's probably thousands, man. The, the when we did the lesson on Monday, they said that, that was the most amount that they they killed since they uh they started doing this over there since that uh was it, a couple months ago that first attack when they had the people parachuting in. Right, right, right. So yeah, so this is what was happening while uh. Everybody was caught up in the in the Diddy crisis, man. All right, this is what this is what really matters because all things lead to what the war Armageddon, World War Three, and the eventual uh, uh, collapse of this uh, U.S. economy. All right, all those things are at the doorstep, Jake. Yeah, this this you is know? the two major policies we keep talking about. The Lord is rolling the red carpet out for the MOTB and World War Three. Yeah, the, the MOTB is what's going to lead to World War Three. There you go. Right. So, hey, once again, the writing is on the wall. All right. Embrace for uh, embrace for uh, brace for impact. Right. Mm -hmm. The expression, the writing is on the wall is used whenever an inevitable result or imminent danger has become apparent. <laughs> this is what we see. Yep. All right. So, hey, with that, hey, we pray that you uh, sincere listeners out there were edified and also informed through the Holy Spirit of the Rakakwadash. We're going to close it out by giving all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh. A double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us his truth. Double salutations to our Yuakim out there laboring in the house of David, the elect, that's pushing his word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom to you, brothers, and shalom to the elect. Hey, shalom. Hey, the water priest, that was dope. Yeah, that was fire.